Hello, my name's Mark and I am Chico Tutor. And I'm here with Practical Machinist to start the third video of this series, and that's how to make this part using G-Code. So today, we're going to be doing the roughing sequence. So in the last two videos, we looked over the part, worked out how we're going to make it, and then we wrote the header section for this program, laying out some tooling information and some process information there. So now we're gonna start straight into writing the roughing sequence, the first part of proper programming we're gonna do. So we're gonna start off by using this line, this N1, and then rough turn in brackets. So N1, as I've said before in these videos, we used to number every single line separately. Now we tend to use the numbers for search functions, and we'll see a bit of that later in this program. So N1 is purely a way for me to search through the program to find my rough turn. So we've got our operator's note in brackets, so the machine does not read this, it's purely for the operator, and we finish with a semicolon at the end there for our end of block. This tells the machine that this line has finished being read and to move on to read the next line. Okay, so this is the safety line. Now this is gonna be different depending on your machine and your needs. So this safety line here, I've just put some information there to set the machine up in the sort of way I expect it to operate at the beginning of each sequence. So when we search back to the beginning of the sequence and rerun it again, we know that the machine is gonna be reset to a safe way that's going to continue to be safe as we do this rest of the sequence. So just quickly, G54 is our working shift datum. G20 sets our machine to imperial units, because this time we're working in imperial. G90 is our absolute coordinate system, so all measurements run from the datum. And G97 is our spindle control, more about that in a minute. G80 removes any active cycles in the machine that may be active at this time. We don't want a drilling cycle to be active while we are doing a roughing cycle. And finally, G40 removes any tool nose radius compensation that may be active. So your safety line may be different. And for more information about how to build safety lines, please see my other videos with Practical Machinist. And um, I talk about this quite a lot. So after our safety line, then we move on to our tool call. So T01 is the tool we are using. And the second 01 there is the datum table uh, position, so where we find that tooling information in the datum table. So T0101 MO6 tells the machine we're going to be using tool one. Uh, we're going to be using tool data from position one and MO6 as our tool change. That brings our carousel or our tool turret into the center line with our tool active. Now you may have noticed I'm using N1 and T1 here. That's not an accident. I always keep my N numbers the same as my tool numbers. So I know if I need to sc scan through the program to the roughing sequence, I can simply look to see what tool I'm using for roughing and then search N and that number, and that brings me to this section. So G50, this is our spindle speed clamp. This stops the machine going above 3000 RPM. Obviously that 3000 RPM is designated with the S there. And we finish with an end of block, the same as all lines. So by doing this, it means that our spindle speed cannot exceed 3000 RPM. And we need to do that because we are using this G96. So G96 is our constant surface speed. So no matter what diameter we are cutting, the actual speed of the material as it hits the tool will be going at the same speed. So by using G96, it can give us a better finish, more accuracy, and it's nice to use for roughing because our diameters are changing quite rapidly. And MO3 turns on the spindle in a clockwise direction. If we have our tools reversed, we might need to use MO4 to rotate the spindle in the opposite direction. So now we're going to do our first movement and we're going to be using G00. This is our rapid travel command. So when G00 is active, all movements are going to ignore feed rates and go as fast as the machine will allow us. That's set in the parameters. So as we're in Imperial, we're bringing in our X dimension to X 2.1 inches. So this is 0.1 above the stock bar size. So we're hoping it's not gonna collide because it's way away from the bar there. But just in case, we're wrapping it in to 40 thousandths of an inch away from that front face. So this move is going nowhere near material. It's just getting our tool in position, getting it ready to cut. And we're moving there as fast as possible so we can switch over to a feed rate move um, and cover less distance 
when we're cutting air. We want most of our cutting to be done while we're removing material using GO1. So we've got MO8 at the end of this line and that turns on our coolant. I like to turn on the coolant at this point because it's just before we start cutting so I can see clearly in the machine right up to this point. So now we're switching over to GO1. Now GO1, as I was just saying, is our feed rate command so we can cut material but we're not actually cutting much here, or if anything at all. We are just coming into Z0, that front of the face there. Um, there's gonna be a bit of extra gash material on the front of that Z0. So we're just coming in to clean this up a little bit. And we've added a feed right there with an F value at the end. So if that all good, we can now feed in and face off. We're just doing a rough and face off at this point. So it feeds in to 0.1 past the center line. Now we need to go past the center line just to remove any pips if our tool is not perfectly on center height because we are drilling later. We don't want a pip there when we introduce a center drill just in case it wobbles. Now 0.1 past the center line is quite a lot. Normally, maybe 10 thousandth of an inch would be fine. I've gone a little bit too far here, but as long as we go slightly past that center line of the point, just remove that pip, and that's all that's important here. Of course, if we go too far past the center line, probably 0.1 where I've moved now, we may break the tip because the surface of the material is rotating the wrong way the second we get past that center line. So this 0.1 past the center line here is definitely too big. I should have probably made that maybe 5 thousandths of an inch. So with our part roughed and faced off, we're now gonna move our cutter away, move our right hand knife tool away from that part. So we're using G00, we're wrapping it away, and we're coming back up to just 40 foul off the front face of our part and bigger than our main stock bar diameter. So it's nice and safe and there's no material anywhere near it. So now we've got our G71 cycle. So this is the roughen cycle and what this is all about. So there's a two line version and a single line version of the G71. We're using the two line version because it is used on more modern machines. Uh, the single line version is also available and I have some notes over on my website at gcotutor.com that explains how to use a single line version. So pop over there and have a look. Okay, so the first line here we have, we start off with G71 to tell the machine this is information about the roughen cycle. Our U value is the depth of cut. So we're taking off 40 foul per pass on this. Good job, we're cutting aluminium. And then our R value is the retract value. So after each cut, the tool is going to retract 40 foul before it moves back to the start of the roughen sequence. So once it's finished our profile, it's gonna retract 40 foul before it moves back. Now our second line of G71 here, we start off with G71 again, and then our P and Q values. So P and Q designates the parts of the program where the subroutine is, and they reference N numbers. So we'll see that as we start programming our subroutine, and I'll talk about that more then. Our U in this line is the amount we're leaving on for finishing, because this is only a roughing cut, we're gonna leave on eight thousandths of an inch for our finishing pass on the next sequence. And W is our finishing allowance in Z, where U is X. So W will leave on four foul on all the lengths as we are cutting this roughing sequence. And finally, a feed rate. So I spoke just now about a subroutine at P110. So what that's doing now is it's calling upon this N number, this N110. So when we see a P with a number like that, now P's do represent lots of different features in GCO programming, not only designating subroutines, but in this case, we're designating a subroutine because that P and Q value is in a roughing sequence. So we're gonna start off by wrapping in 2X456. So what this is, this is the core diameter of our thread because we want to machine that taper for our leading of our thread right at the beginning there. Now quite often we don't use G00s or rapid moves within um, our roughing sequence, but in this case where we're coming down to the parts of our chamfer there, it's fine and it works perfectly. So once we've got into position, we can then bring in our tool to the very front face of our part without moving material. So we're coming into Z0 here. So right at the very front of that chamfer. And we're using G42, we're turning on our tool nose radius compensation here. And because it's external, we use G42. If it's internal, we would use G41 cutting in this direction. So this is the end point of the chamfer of our thread. So once we've got to the end point, we can then 
cut the full length of this diameter. So we're going back 0 0.780 in Z from our datum position. So assuming our datum is zeroed at the front of the part, so all Z will be minus um, unless we are not cutting material in a way of the front of the part in Z. So we're going to now come up to X one inch to the start of our major taper there. Now, if you remember back to the planning lesson, we need to do a little bit of maths here because we don't know where the finishing point of this is. So let's have a look how we're going to calculate the maths for this taper. OK, so as promised, let's work out the maths to calculate this point here. So to start off with, we're going to need to convert this into a triangle like that. So we're going to draw that triangle up here. This is a right angle to 90 degrees. This angle here would be our 30 degrees with opposites angles. So that would be 30. And this would be 0 0.7. So we are going to try and calculate this length here. So once we know this length, we can double it and we know the length of the other side and we can do some simple addition to work out what this point is. Because we are not using the hypotenuse for this, uh, we're using the two other lengths, so that means we're going to be using tangent to calculate this length. So the first thing we need to do is find out what tan 30 equals. So a quick look at my calculator, and it tells me it equals 0.5773. So I've added the tenth on this, although we'll be rounding it down to the nearest thousandth of an inch. So once we found out our tangent, um, of that angle, we can then multiply that by the length, 0 0.7, and that equals 0 0.404. So we now know that our question mark is equal to 0 0.404. Now we have that length there, we now solved this length here. So we need to double that for the other side too. So we know what this is here. So let's double it and let's call that 0 0.8. Oh, eight. So that's this length here plus this length here. Now this middle length we know is one inch, so we need to add one inch to it. So the final answer is 1.808 oh, eight, and that gives us this point right here um, in our X. So that's how we know um, what that end point is of the chamfer by doing some very simple trigonometry. Now, if you want to know more about trigonometry, I actually have a full course over on my website at gcotutor.com where you'll learn all of this to be able to solve any technical problem using trigonometry in your machines. Okay, so let's go back to the coding. Okay, so now we know where the end point of that taper is, we can plot our program to get there. So our next line is x, 1.808 and our z is minus 1.48. So this is going to bring us to that end point of that taper that we just calculated. So our next move is just we're going to cut straight along where this recess is um, to that face. We're not going to do anything else at this point because we are going to bring in a grooving tool at uh, another point in these videos to machine these grooves. So we're just going to cut a flat across there at the moment and then come up to two inches to our major diameter there, ready to do the final part of the profile. So when we cut through the profile in Z, I'm coming 0.1 past the end there. So that's to allow for the width of a parting off tool. We don't really want our parting off tool hitting gash material with an uneven surface. So by this way, we can make sure that surface is nice and clean, ready for our parting off tool, because parting off always gives me problems. So the easier I can make it for me and my tool, the better. So next up, we have our final line of the subprogram. So this is called from that Q value, that's Q220 back on the G71 line. So this line starts with our end number and then G40 to remove a cutter compensation or tall nose radius compensation in this case. And then we're moving to a safe working distance in X. So 0.1 larger than the main diameter size of our bar. And then we're going to come in and Z by 0.1 off the face. So we've got lots of clearance there. And I'm using a very fast feed rate rather than rapid for this one. So this gives me more control over that rapid override switch. We can instead use the feed override knob to really control the speed when we're doing our first pass to make sure nothing's going to collide. So instead of using a rapid in this case, I've used a very fast feed rate just to give me a little bit more control as I'm setting up. 
Once the profile is done, we can then switch back to the machine datum G53. And if we zero that at X0, Z0, it will take the machine back to its tool change position. Usually, usually that's where the G53 zero is set. And then we're gonna finish off by MO9. That's gonna turn off our coolant. MO5 turns off the spindle. G97 puts our machine back into the right spindle mode. So once we finish the sequence, we are now safe to run the drilling op, etc. when we're controlling the RPM of the spindle. And then finally, MO1 is our optional stop. I always add this at the end of each sequence so we can pop in and check to make sure everything is correct before we move on to the next sequence. So that's how I write my roughing sequence on a lathe. Now the next video in the series is going to be the finishing sequence where we're gonna call upon that subroutine once more to do a finishing pass. Now, if you want to learn more about G-Code programming, I have a whole bunch of courses, um, up to 12 currently, over on my website at gcodetutor.com, where I teach G-Code programming, computer-aided design, machine shop maths, and manual lathe skills. So pop over and check it out.